Next Saturday, we're not going to have evangelism camp, and we'll have one week before the barbecue, okay? And we need to keep in mind, um, is your own personal evangelism. So Saturday just was kind of, uh, we went out as, as an evangelism team, um, but the point of camp isn't how many people accepted Christ or you know, what happened, this or that, but the most important part of evangelism camp is continuation. So how are you going to bring this evangelism camp into your own field, into your own region? Uh, and for this, um, it's personal evangelism is the key. So for this personal evangelism, the very most important key ingredient is the Word. Now I know you've heard this before, um, it's something you're going to continue to hear because the Word doesn't change. The standard is going to be God's Word always. Um, how much of the Word of God, in other words, more simply put, or breaking it down a little bit more, how much is the Gospel, God's living and active Word, how much is it of that Word is really applied into your everyday life? How much of it is yours? You know, not Pastor Yu's Gospel, not Pastor Sam's Gospel, not Pastor Brett's Gospel, not some other one else's Gospel. How much of that gospel is your gospel, my gospel, my Christ, not just Jesus is the Christ, how much of Christ is, is yours? It's making that connection into your field. So to do that, um, as pastor has been mentioning, it's how much of this word is um, organized. And he used the word, not, not only organized, but how much of it the Korean word is kirok. How much of it have you written down? And the point is, okay, is the point isn't okay. I'm going to write it down. Not only, but the point is, how much of it is it imprinted and rooted and in my nature, the Word of God. Okay, so that's I know there's a lot of things there. So what I mean by how much of it is it or, of, a, of the Word is is it organized? It's not just organizing or memorizing like the Jews do or the Pharisees do. How much of the Word of God have you can, can you see from the perspective of the Gospel? Um, there's so many answers within that. You know, I'm still learning, and you know, until the day I die, and even when I, when I get to heaven, the mystery of the Gospel is still going to be amazing. It's, it's just... We, if you just look, for example, at Matthew 5, 6, 7, Pastor Yu, if you catch on, he's going through the, the, the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. You know, you can start it with Matthew 5, um, and he's going going through that. Try this week to look into those passages, and you're going to find some things there. Some things that might be like, yo, whoa, what? There's a there's por portions of Matthew 5 that says, if your eye, right eye causes you to sin, to, ke to cut out your eye. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Huh? <laughs> If you don't organize this, if you don't organize the word within the perspective of the gospel, you're going to completely miss the point. There's an also point in Matthew 7 where he talks about fruits and trees. And if you look at there, it says, if you don't produce good fruit, you will be cut down and thrown into the fire. And by your fruit, you will recognize them. What? <laughs> if you misunderstand and have not organized the gospel, that's going to make it seem like you better produce some good fruit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, do you have good fruit? Do you have good fruit? Because if you don't have good fruit, and if you have bad fruit, you're going to be thrown into the fire. I'm not trying to confuse you right now. <laughs> what I'm trying to encourage you to do is look at the scripture and look very deeply and organize the covenant and find the gospel there. Jesus speaks in parables for a reason. This is why he says he speaks this way. Because the disciples ask him later on, why are you doing that? Why don't you just, don't talk about trees and fruits and roots and this and that, man. Why don't you just please just say it plainly? And he's like, <laughs> Jesus is like, I speak in parables for that those who are not appointed for salvation, but they will not understand here and receive salvation. It's a very scary kind of statement that Jesus makes. So you better understand the parables. <laughs> In other words, you better understand what the gospel is. Matthew chapter 7, the fruit, if you look there, there's one verse that plainly, clearly speaks about the gospel. One verse. 
A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. It's not about the fruit at all. Are you following me? Fruits are things that happen naturally. Jesus says, remain in the vine, remain in me, and you will produce. He's the one who causes the fruit to produce. Are you following me? So the question isn't, do you have good fruit or bad fruit? The real question is, are you a good tree or a bad one? Have you received salvation? Are you freed from Satan's sin and separation from God? What kind of tree are you? And where do the fruits, nutritions come from? The roots. So Jesus is trying to point out, are you following me? The gospel is changing your roots. Changing your fruits or watering your fruits or trying to produce good fruit is what? Religion. So don't get confused. In other words, you really have to organize the gospel, the word, and then the next step is to organize prayer. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And ask, knock, seek. But for what? Not for things that you want, but for things that God has prepared for you. What are the things that God has prepared for you? If you're not careful, you're going to miss it. Yes, you can pray for this. Yes, you can pray for that. Yes, you can pray for a promotion. Yes, you can pray for going and this and this and everything. You can pray for those things. You have the right to do that because you're children of God. But what's more important is to organize what are the prayer topics that God desires and what is the prayer topics that God wants to give to you. What are the answers that God has prepared for you? Amen? When that becomes organized, evangelism is such a natural result of that. Okay? So organize, organizing these three things and then taking it into your personal evangelism field. Okay? This next two weeks, EM Barbecue. Okay, it's not important how many people you invite. It's not important how many people come. Okay, but it's it's utilizing this important time schedule in our ministry to do to think about that more and like think about evangelism every day and wherever you go. If you see a foreigner, you should be like, man, barbecue. But I don't mean do you understand what I'm saying, right? It's not like, oh man. Yeah, he should have come hamburgers. No, you should be thinking, man, that guy needs to hear the gospel. <laughs> what a great opportunity. And the whole purpose of connecting evangelism to your personal life is that you will... change your spiritual state every day to seeking God's kingdom and His righteousness. Change your spiritual state to experience God in more personal ways. Amen? Amen. Change your spiritual state so you can experience God's word that's living and active. To see it being fulfilled. Okay, so the next couple weeks, pray for that. Okay? The second point, as we do that, don't, don't only think about the barbecue, but from continuation from camp, you all of you guys really pray for your regions, okay, where you live. If you invite some people from your region and they come to the barbecue, what the other prayer topic that you need to have is, I need to, I really want to pray for, if you're not, if there's no word movement, if there's no tarapang in your region, pray to participate in one, pray to start one, okay? I'm just going to call it the WN. Okay, or the DRB. Okay, pray for this in your region. Okay, ultimately, for the, for the answer of regional church. Pray for your region where you live. Okay, this camp, and, and you know, for uh, Nancy and Jana that are going back, pray for your regions too. It's not just camp here, it's wherever you go, pray for the region. Okay, it's always a prayer topic for the first century church because we have to go to the ends of the year. Amen? And for that regional evangelization, it's not you alone, you pray for the answer of team. Okay. The answer of team, and I'm praying as I talk with, as the pastors pray, and we pray for this, I don't know if it's possible or if it's God's time schedule for us to have a continuous camp, like once a month or something, I don't know. But the formulation of the team and the continuous evangelism camp. That's all Paul did. 
and made a team, went to seven regions. That's all he had time for because he didn't have a car, he didn't have a plane, he didn't have a... He had his feet. <laughs> and he had letters. But he traveled two or three times to around seven regions with a team. That's all he did and he changed the world. Okay, so pray for this. Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am there. Amen? Pray for the team so that in your regions and in your fields you can find the prepared doors and find the prepared system. Uh, this past uh, RTS camp, I was able to um, help the, the foreign students there. And uh, this team, is, the, the answer team is so important. Okay, so for two years, they just went to the field. They took cut branches and materials. They went to the field, and that's good. That was an important time schedule, a training camp for them to go and share the gospel. But they had never been able to contact the remnants within the school. They, were never be able, they, they weren't able to contact uh, the pastors that go into that school. Uh, they were just going in on their own. So this camp, praying with the Answer for Team, uh, we try to meet with the remnants. We try to meet with the pastor that's in charge of those remnants. There's also a regional church system there that they had never really connected with. So as we connected, we found out that there's graduates from that school that actually go to RTS. We found out that there are freshmen that are Chinese speaking. Uh, the, the other thing that we found out is that in the, in the, in the field, what other doors that are prepared are non-believers are prepared too. So there are staff at the school, naturally, of course, that are trying to help foreign students but don't know how. Are you following me? So we're going into the field, into the camp, the camp field, into that region, meeting those people to see if there's a prepared door. We, I met um, the staff that's in charge of the foreign students. Her name is Joy. She lived in the States for almost eight, nine years. English is perfect. And she, she, because she's lived overseas, because she knows what it's like to be a foreign student, she understands how difficult it is to be a foreign student. And she, she told me as I met with her and told her you know, what we're, we're trying to do, she said, yes, you know, the most difficult group of students are the Chinese students. They make programs for foreign students, the Europeans, the Africans, the English, the Spanish, they all come to this the program they make, but the Chinese students don't, and she doesn't know why. That's a door. So if we do something for the Chinese students, she says she'll provide a location, she'll advertise the event. I'm not saying that every campus we go to, we should go straight to the staff or school. That's not what I'm saying. It has to be like this, like a model of how we should go into the colleges. But what I'm trying to, what I am trying to say, is we need to receive God's guidance, make the team, and find the God, the prepared doors and system that God has in the field. So when you in your regions, try to look at it that same way too. It doesn't matter if you meet a hundred people or a hundred people accept Christ. That's not the point. It's finding that prepared door that God has. Absolute prepared door in that field. And that's why the team formation is so important. Okay. So pray for that. Pray for that. Okay. okay. The last thing is this. So the next two weeks before the barbecue camp, um, this is the mob. Acts 2.42. They held on to the apostles' teaching. Okay? It's the word of God. So try to... Okay, not all of our EM members listen to the headquarters message, but you guys, um, as the main staff and our team, um, go over the, the headquarters message, the core message, especially the business message. Okay? Hold on to... the pulpit message as well, okay? And also, the prayer journal message, okay? All of this, the point of this is to see the message flow. What does that mean, the message flow? It's to see God's perfect time schedule for you and for us together as a whole. God is moving throughout history, not only in this time, but throughout history, God moves according to His Word, using the minority 
individuals and groups and teams of people to change the world. Are you following me? There, he's doing something. Something's happening in South Korea, guys. The, what happened last week, it's not a coincidence. This is, this is mind-boggling. The two leaders of North Korea and South Korea shaking hands at the DMZ and one crossing over the other and the other. You know, we have to still wait and see what's going to happen. But this is all part of God's flow. What God is doing. In, in, amen? amen? The Winter Olympics was in South Korea. What? And, and you know, the, the, what is that? The, you know, it's all connected to what God wants to do for world, world evangelization. Okay, when you go into the Word, try to find that. Okay, connect it to you. Okay, let's pray.